What's up? What's up out there, world? This is your boy, Marlon Ballard, with the Love to Laugh podcast. I am tuned in by a very, very, very special guest, my man from the Rude Boys out of Cleveland, Ohio, my boy, Joey Beans, a.k.a. Joey Little, whatever you want to call him. My boy Joe is in the house. Give it up for Joe, man. Give it up for him. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you for joining me, bro. What's up? What's up, everybody? That's what I'm no problem, about. brother. You already know. Thank you so much, man. How did... How, how are you managing right now during the, during the COVID times right now? What you been up to, brother? Man, just, you know, got the home studio going, working on, uh, you know, a few projects. I've been able, got a lot of time on my hands, so I've been able to uh, take care of my business with that and just create. And um, I've had time just to work on myself and, <clears throat> you know, develop my coffee company and make it a little bit better than, you know, than it, than it was. And just been able to focus, man. Man, and, and and I want to say this to you, me being from, from Ohio, you know, people don't really claim Lorraine. I'm from Lorraine, so we looking at Cleveland like, man, there's so much talent. <laughs> Cleveland, man, like, you had y'all, you had the Rude Boys, you had LaVert, you had Bone. Like, it's so much talent in Cleveland that came out. Like, how do you feel being a part of that that legacy? Man, I just feel good about being, you know, from Cleveland and part of the, the, the Cleveland movement, Ohio, you know, being associated with Gerald LaVert. And just being able to, you know, make something happen from here. Because, you know, it's rough over in this end. We, we're not looked at as a music city. But the groups that have been successful have made it through that, um, that you know, stereotype. So, you know, we've been able to get some awards, some Grammy Awards out of here and Billboard Awards and Soul Train Awards and, you know, from groups across the board. So, you know just feels good to be part of a legacy man you know and, and y'all and y'all made a big one because every time i come home i put on 93.1 and they playing written all over your face all damn day it's a marathon <laughs> <laughs> it's that's that's, that's the number one that's the number all one day. song still all to this day. day and you you have a that's a classic song yeah, like man, that's actually, song. Uh, the, the, yeah man it's being played you know basically uh medium rotation man it's as if it's a current single and it's been like that since its inception, man, in 1991. So from 91 to 2020, man, just to have something that resounds like that so long, man, is a blessing. You know, I'm really truly thankful to the creator for shoot allowing me to have its experience and have this song. The one song, definitely. Hey, if you a fan, y'all got more than one song to me. Like, honestly, Heaven, uh, uh, My Kind of Girl, Written all mm -hmm. over your face, like y'all got. To me, y'all got hits. So, hey, mm -hmm. we gonna we gonna we gonna dig deep in this one. So, you got Joey Beans, Joey Little, you got Melvin, Buddy. Yeah, Dave. well, I was just saying that one song in particular. Oh, mm -hmm. you, 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 you got you got y'all's for. So, uh, how did y'all all meet? Were y'all high school buddies? Like, what was that? Um, we actually met through church. Buddy Banks, the other day singer. Um, he came to my church and was singing, man, and just, like, was blowing. And, you know, after service, I went up to him. I was just like, man, I want to sing with you, man. Dude, you're amazing. And um, we got together, and, you know, we uh, made good, man. We started it off as a gospel group called Power. And uh, we was doing that, and then we transferred over to the Rude Boys and added uh, Larry and Melvin to the group. And, um, you know, the rest is history. We went on and just did a lot of local and regional stuff in Ohio. And then, um, you know, me and Buddy was hanging out one night in a uh, club called The Reason Why, and that's where we met Gerald LeVert. Man. And from then on, it was, Gerald, it was on and popping. Like, being discovered by Gerald, like, that that had to be something, because Gerald was, was on fire at that point. Like, he, just, he was in LeVert, and he was dropping his own solo stuff, and then here y'all come, and I remember you saying that the record company didn't want y'all. was like, what was what was that? Well, um, the record company they they uh they they signed us without hearing us, but um we had released on our first album we released a song called "Come Come On Let's Do This," and um with that being said they were uh, they wasn't they, when it came time to put out "Rain All Over Your Face" they really wasn't down with it they didn't think that it would be what it would be you know they didn't think that it was a hit song and that it was worthy of releasing but um. On our end, we just begged Gerald, like, man, come on, man. You know, this is the song, man. We need to come with this next. And um, we came with it, and it ended up going number one, and we won a Billboard 
Voice Song of the Year for that year. And um, it was amazing. And then we followed up after that with Are You Lonely For Me, mm -hmm. um, which is a song I wrote. And it went number one. So off our first album, we had two number ones. Man, solid yeah. album for me. In um, 1990, y'all had a lot. It was, that's when groups started to really come together. So you had y'all and then also on the radio, I believe High Five was taking over. Um, I don't believe Jodeci was out at the time. You had High Five, Tony, 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 Guy. How was it to compete? With yeah, Jodeci had been out. Jodeci came out in like 89. With the uh, Father MC, right? Yeah, Jodeci came out in 89, so they were already out. Mm -hmm. But they were out with um, Forever My Lady a little bit before us. Um, and that album, that first album, they were out earlier than us. We came out after them and after Guy. Guy and um, Guy and uh, Jodeci were the first two groups to set the tone, you know, for the 90s. And um, that's what it was. How, how Was it hard um, competing? Got to fight for your spot on, on the charts? Like, was, it, was that difficult? Yeah, man, because there was a lot of good music out there, man. So um, our song really didn't fight, man. It really, like, just rolled out, man. And then we got up to the top uh, five, and we finally got to two. And uh, Whitney Houston, all the man that I need, was there in number one spot. And so she made us wait. Her song <laughs> made us wait, like, three weeks, yeah. three or four weeks. And then after that, we were still in number two the whole time, man. And after she went out, we went in. Or number one, and then the next week, uh, high five. The kissing game came and knocked us out the way. Man, that was that was a good time for music. And even though, like you know, I'm young. I'm born in 1991, but I went back and did my research, man. Like I'm like, I gotta I gotta start a podcast and give these guys some light because it's like R&B is non-existent to me nowadays. Like they combined it with hip hop, and now it's all one thing. So like, is is that something that you noticed that happened? Yeah, man, it started happening um, back then. Um, things started changing in like 92, where they were combining, where rap was kind of taking over the R&B. And you could see the change. But um, yeah, man, I, I could see that things were changing. And, um, you know, it just has really went into a whole another place now. So, you know, rap now is like considered R&B, especially with all the rappers singing with the auto-tune and so it kind of, you know, it took away from, you know, traditional R&B. But, you know, as time goes, things change. You're so right. what can you say? We're going to get to know you a little bit. Who inspired you to sing? Who was, who was your idol that uh, motivated you to become a singer? Um, my, two, my two favorite singers, my two, um, my two favorite singers are Stevie Wonder, Frank Sinatra, um, definitely. Uh, the top two, Aretha Franklin, but I just love all kind of music growing up as a kid, and I felt just a fire in my belly, man, a fire inside that was telling me that, you know, I was a singer, and um, that's all I ever wanted to be was a singer. I wanted to win awards and sing for millions of people and just study the game with so many people, man, and um, been inspired by so many, but Stevie Wonder, Frank Sinatra, um, Gospel Wise, John P. Key, James Moore, um, just a lot of, you know, old school, you know, um, but definitely a, a wide range of music, man, from classical to country, Pat Boone, um, like a lot of different people, man, you know. And, and it's, it's funny you say that because when I, when I hear you, I can hear the, uh, and the inspiration from John P. Key, his runs and everything. I'm like, yo, Joe was definitely inspired by mm -hmm. he, he keep would come on the track with the no, 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 no. Oh, no. yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, shit, Joe, okay. Right. Oh, and, uh, John, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yep, actually, uh, um, John, me and John P. Key got a song coming out called So Let Me Breathe along with um, Isaac Carey. And a couple other fellas, uh, fellas, uh, Frank McComb, and some different guys. But it's called um, uh, what? What? What are we calling it? Men, something black men or something, but not black men united, but men with the soul or voices or something. And um, it's coming, man. We just I just finished doing the video for it, and um, they'll be releasing it soon, man. So look out for that. You know, with John P. Key, you know, he like a big brother to me, an uncle slash uncle man and just has been really 
inspiring to me, not just from afar, but up close and personal. And speaking of Black Men United, I'm glad you brought that up. You was a part of that performance they did on the award show, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, so, man, was how was that being on stage with all that talent? You like, man, this, you got Aaron Hall, Gerald, um, Silk, H Town. Like that's that was magical. I mean, and you were part of that. Man, it was great to be up there with my brothers man, and just all of us uniting, um, just to sing together and bring that. That's history, man. It's phenomenal. Um, it was a, it was amazing, man. It was it was something monumental. It's never been done since. You know, but that was a hell of an era. It was a lot of R and B groups, a lot of R and B singers, and it's a time that um, is not matched to do something like that, man. But just to do it, do a video for it for the Jason Leary soundtrack, and then to be able to um, go on the American Music Awards and perform it was phenomenal. You know, just being on the American Music Awards and just being able to, you know, live my dream and just be around all the top singers and people that were up there, man. It was amazing yeah so so you so you along with the rest of the guys y'all had you were part of two albums um rude awakening mm -hmm. and the playhouse i forget <laughs> well Ooh. yep so why why did you break away after the second album um well during that time in the, the label actually let us go um dropped us with the second album i just don't know how they handled it so atlantic records basically put it out there we had a couple singles um i don't feel that it got the push that it could have but then we were having some internal group problems also with the group you know that i won't really go too deep into but um you know we just really kind of separated we didn't break up as a group but i went on to stay on atlantic records and do a solo album called putting it down yeah. Up under, you know, Gerald Royce production, you know, stayed with him where the group went their own way. And, um, you know, ba that's basically was it, man. It was trying times. Stuff came up and, you know, I just did the best with what I could do with it, you know. Because to, to me, like, you you and Buddy's yeah. chemistry on, on record is one of the greatest vocal conversations I've heard ever. Even um, Woody from Drew Hill, I interviewed him, and he and he praised y'all. He was like, yo, like these two, like easily up there with a Casey and JoJo, up there with a Jazz. <laughs> like, I, like, I really wanted to see y'all break away and do something like solo-wise, like both of y'all together. And that would have been magical, too. How, how, is, uh, how is Buddy doing nowadays? Because we barely hear from him. We barely hear from anybody. Yeah, man. Um, well, as you know, one of our group members passed away. Um, uh, Larry Marcus, he passed um, from colon cancer, and then um, Buddy and Melvin, um, they they cool man. They basically are retired, um, health issues um, that that's keeping them, you know, from you know performing and being with the group and doing what we do. But um, I have uh, Kenny Miles and G LeBeau who are performing with me cross country and across the world, and we doing our thing. But Buddy's doing fine. I mean, he's in the land of the living. So is Melvin, and um, you know they they cool, man. You know, that's good, man. And also, you you also stay busy by opening up a a black owned coffee shop in Cleveland, one of the few black owned spots in the country. So how does it feel to have have a coffee shop of your own with your name on it, your brand, your everything? Um, beautiful, man. It's just another dream that you know came along as I I went, and um, just to be an entrepreneur and be able to know how something to do other than singing another passion. And um, Urban Joe Coffee has really been a blessing to me. And um, I'm glad that God gave the idea to me and my cousin, um, Terrell Howard, who helped me come up with the concept. And um, it's a beautiful thing, man. I love doing it. I love coffee. I love, um, you know, just serving people and giving people something that they love. Got you. Okay. Hey, man, I applaud that because, hey, not a lot of people can break off and do something like that. A lot of people want to buy mansions and stuff. You came back to your own community. Actually, you're one of the most accessible people in Cleveland. Like, you can see you walking down the street like, oh, this, damn, that's Joe. Like, you ain't on no high horse or nothing. I appreciate it about you. Because I'm like, I can easily, you could have easily right. said, thanks, bro. You could have easily said no and be like, man, who are you? Like, type shit. And I would be like, man, really? I love your song, dog. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, but you know, 
You and your mans, y'all came to support my coffee shop. I, 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 we had a ball that day too, man. Hey, 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 um, hey shout you know, out. I appreciate that. Shout out to my boy Hank. He, uh, he still tell me the story about how his girl broke up to him to that song, man. <laughs> I'm like, how you get broke up to like that's such crazy. A song like that, man. Come on now. <laughs> oh man, but you, again, like, hey. Man, I, hey, I've gotten broke up, broken up to the song, a couple songs. Like, I got broken up to uh, to to Drew Hill. Uh, <laughs> We're not making love no more. Like, I like that's the worst song to get broken up to. I'm what like, man? I ain't want to listen. That to that ain't song good for two years. I couldn't listen to that song, man. Man, mm -hmm. I, I don't, that's I, crazy, I, dog. But as as you know, man, I'm out here doing this comedy thing, man. I've, I've been trying to come back to Cleveland. I want to come to your shop and throw up something, man. I want to I want to do something at your shop to come bring some business to you, bro. Yeah, man. Well, when you in town, when the next time you coming, you gotta come on through, man. Hey, I, I be I be trying to, dog. I, I came up there and did a show in the park and sold that joint out. So hopefully, you know, I can bring all the people to Cleveland because you know how to, you know how people, black people are. Hey, are you having a show? Yeah, I'm gonna come. And then they don't show up. They ask you a million questions. And like, <laughs> what's what's the dress code? What kind of food they got? Uh, is the parking free? Like all that. I, I don't. I don't mm. Nah, I don't do that, bro. Oh man. So um, when was this? I, I would when I hit you up, uh, like probably a month ago. You was like the shop was closed. Right, right. That, that's cool. That's, and I hate I missed your show. No, you, you. It, it was impromptu. You know, I came up there. I lost a couple people to COVID, and I came up there to to pretty much cope and you know hang with family like that. So um, I asked you a couple more mm. questions. Um, as, as you know, um, the versus battles are, are real popular now. Um, so who do you think y'all could go up against in the versus battle? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, threw mm. your curveball, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't know. We could probably go up against anybody. Uh, whatever, whoever, whatever R&B group, you know, they put in front of us, we could. There's a lot of other groups that got more hits than us and more releases and more albums. Mm -hmm. So by us only really having two projects, it would be kind of like, you know, lopsided. But we got some strong songs that could compete. But um, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I, anybody, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna turn, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna back up, I ain't gonna back up from nobody. But if we start singing live, going head to head, and live and talk, man, hey, it's very few people I know that can hit Gerald's notes in in a song, and you can do that shit. And uh, hey, murder it every time, bro, murder it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I definitely, would, I would, I would love some, I would love some head to head action. Hey, you want Joe? Joey want all the smoke. Hey, everybody out there, Joey want the smoke. Bring yeah. it. <laughs> hey, and who's? Um, why? Why haven't? I want it. Why has reached out? I want that smoke. Uh, why? Why hasn't Unsung reached out to y'all to do an episode? It, it seems like they did everybody and their mama already, but Rude Boys don't have an episode. Why is that? I'm not sure. You know what? I'm not. I'm really not sure, man. I'm not sure, but we worked. On it. My assistant, um, Shay, she's working on it. She's been having dialogue with them, so we'll see. Because y'all's story definitely needs to be told. Because yep. we want to know how y'all career was from when y'all was up there in, in, in solid suits. I think you had the purple one on. I'm like, man, these dudes are bright. They are bright with the high top fade. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I ran into uh, Arsenio a couple years back, and I bought up the episode that y'all uh, participated in. And he, it's like, it took him back into memory lane because he was like, man, I remember that episode. I was so happy that uh, Cleveland was in the house. Gerald showed up with the jeans on. I'm like, man. This, it was, this, man. This, man, it was electric, bro. It man. was electric. And y'all, y'all got a couple of phenomenal performances on on YouTube, from the Apollo to y'all doing Arsenio to Madeline Woods interviewing y'all. Like y'all right. on the show always. Like, um, what did y'all aspire to be that that dancing group? Because there's a groups that dance and there's groups that just was all vocal. Like, what did y'all want to do? Uh, we was mostly a vocal group. We wasn't no dancing group. We did steps, but like troop, troop. That was a dancing group. True. No, they, they were one of a kind. Fury curl, like they was dripping everywhere to spread my wings and cry. 
Bruh, I don't know how they did it. I don't know. I don't know, man. But it, it was <laughs> man. Them high five was dancing. Um, it it was new addition. Mm -hmm. It was the dancers, and then there was the <laughs> y'all was part of the singers. Yeah, you, Jodeci, Boys the Men didn't really dance like that. They they tried at first. They was like, nah, we are gonna stick to the vocals, man. But man, yeah, man, we a we a vocal we a we a vocal group. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start to close this out. What advice would you give to any uh, new and up and coming singers or groups that want to make it in the music business? What do you tell them nowadays so they won't get bit in the ass later on in life? Man, just hold on to your, just stay true to your dreams. Work hard, put in work, get in that studio right, um, and just stay 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 focused and stay on it. Don't give up. You know, the music business has changed, so it's more of an independent game, you know, get yeah. get get you some money up, push yourself, get on your social networks, build your fan base up and just push. Do y'all think y'all would have uh, been bigger? It had social media been what it was nowadays back then? Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. Everybody big because of social media. Everybody don't deserve that shit though. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Nah, but no, nah, but we in the times where it's somebody for everybody, man. You you right, you right. Because hey, back then if social media existed, I think it would have been real messy too. Because there's a lot of stuff we didn't see, like from from inner group turmoil to like you never, like if Tupac had a Twitter, boy. If Tupac had a Twitter, man, <laughs> man, that would have been wow. on, like y'all, and then uh, it's it's just. It's a lot that we missed out on, but it's good that we missed out on it. But that stuff we don't even see is none of our business. That's what it's problem now. Like it's too much yeah. business going on. Yeah. But right. right. But at least you a lot of material to work with. Hey, that, that hey, that's why hey, I know you're a fan of comedy, bro. That's why I'm trying to come up there and, and, and cause comics mess with you. Like I brought your name up to a couple comics. I'm like, they're like, yeah, Joe, that's my man. So I'm like, oh, he's a comedy fan. Comedy, comedy. Okay. Yeah, man. I know, yeah, man. I know Cedric the Entertainer. We cool. Um who else? I know Cedric real good. Um, what's the one dude that play Big Worm? Uh uh Faison. Um Big Worm. <laughs> Cool and Jamie Foxx, me and him cool. I know Jamie really well. You know, quite a few people, man. You know, um, uh, uh, of course, our, our homegirl from Cleveland. Who? Kim Whitney. Oh, uh, Kim Whitney. Kim, yep, Kim, David Arnold. Uh, it's a couple. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. I think Rodney Perry got people out in Cleveland. He got he got some family out there. So hey, Rodney Perry, Rodney Perry, Rodney Perry, Rodney Perry is a very close friend of mine. And he he's the one uh, that that uh, was yeah. like, yo, you go to Cleveland, hit your little up. He's like, cause you you been singing this shit all day. We actually sung it on karaoke one day, and I butchered that fucking song, dude. <laughs> I tried to sing <laughs> yo part. I tried to sing buddy part. I tried to do bingo. Ronnie was like, yo, what part am I? I'm like, you, Gerald. You got to be here, sit there and just wait for Gerald to come in. I right? just wait. I got this. Nigga, I made an ass of myself, dude. Man, I seen <laughs> man, I seen you in the car the, I heard you in the car the other night. Um singing oh, uh, my kind of girl. Man, hey, here's the thing about Google. Keep your day job. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey I, hey, I stick to the notes I know, all right? <laughs> Man, hey, the thing about Google Music, mm -hmm. they didn't have, they had y'all's first album. They didn't have nothing beyond that. So now that it's YouTube music, now your second album mysteriously shows up. So they was hiding a lot of music, which is why y'all wasn't getting a lot of streams. Mm -hmm. so, yep. So, um, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Joe, hey, I appreciate you doing this with me. Um, tell the people what you got coming up next, how to follow you on social media, like what you got going on. Go ahead and tell everybody. Yeah, so right now I got my Urbane Joe Coffee going. Urbane Joe Coffee. U-R-B-E-A-N Joe dot coffee. I got two projects, two albums coming out. Um, this next year coming up in 2021, a book also called The Day of the Convention Storyteller. Um, you know, I have my, my label, me and my partner, Mark Jenkins, got Brother to Brother International. 
Um, you know, that we got a, a distribution with Warner Brothers, so we got that going. Um, and just really just concentrating on the coffee and my music and, you know, soon probably touring with Uncle Charlie Wilson. Going to go out there and work with him. You know, looking forward to that in the, um, to next year. And just really just staying focused and staying on my grind, man. You know, y'all look out for me on um, Instagram, Joe Little, Rude Boys, J-O-E-L-I-T-T-L-E, Rude Boys, R-U-D-E-B-O-Y-S, um, Urbing Joe Coffee, U-R-B-E-A-N, Joe Coffee, and then The Real Rude Boys. That's our uh, IG, The Real Rude Boys, The R-U-D-E, um, B-O-Y-S. Dope. And, hey, and world, y'all know there's only three rude boys now, including me, is four. So I'm going on tour with them, too. So I'll be over there doing the dance steps. Joe ain't going to give me a microphone, though. So that's messed up. Uh, <laughs> so, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. Come on with us, man. Come on with us. Hey, I'm, I'm going to come. Hey, you know, you come to Atlanta or whatever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there. I'm going to be there, dog. Thank you so much, Joe, man. Hey, man. Thank you so much. Uh, this is your boy, Marlon Ballard, with the Love the Laugh podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Peace.